Hello? Oh, how charming. Hattier is wanted on the phone. Our employer, he wants a progress report. Yes. Uh, hello, Mr. Loder. Yes, everything's going according to plan. Well, I'm pleased to hear it. You're working on it now? Oh, I see. So Davis has finished, has he? Who? Davis, the little Welsh miner I told you about. Davis? The man who's just done the job for you. Da oh, Davis, yes. Yes, of course. And thank you for telling us about him. He's just about to go. He's done an excellent job. Splendid. Goodbye. We're going to make it, my dear. Davis was first rate. Apparently, it's all going very well. Pay him off, my dear. But it... Uh, thank you very much, Signor Dari. You've been a great help. We're paying you in lira. That's best for you, isn't it? Lira? Yes. Uh, si, si. Uh, grazie. Oh, oh, there's your ticket, Mr. Dari. Your aeroplane ticket? Ah, si, si, capito. Good. Che, che? Nothing to do with you. What the devil are you doing, Blake? I was looking at this. You're in our exact location. What we're up to. And what does it matter? Now, why do you think we bring in an Italian? Because he doesn't understand English. This means nothing to him, you moron. He's a hard-working, innocent, respectable man. But you, of course, have to make an enemy of him. You'll get over it. He's been paid enough. I'm so sorry. Uh, my friend, uh, you know. Ah, uh, far niente. Yes. Arrivederci. Goodbye. My master. I cannot afford to be so casual, my dear. It was stupid of Blake to lose his temper. But our plans depend on secrecy. gentleman would like a word with the ambassadors. Is it those peasants again, Roberto? Uh, yes, Your Excellency. Will you never be firm? Tell them to go away and not to return until they have someone of importance with them. Uh, but I have, Your Excellency. Oh. Go and supervise the carbons, Roberto. We'll never be ready on time. Uh, may I introduce the Assistant Commissioner at Scotland Yard? Assistant Commissioner? I thought I made it. Sir Geoffrey Norton. Sir Geoffrey Norton. How do you do? Uh, uh, privilege, Your Excellency. You'd better come inside, Sir Geoffrey. I don't want to attract any more attention. Uh, you are very kind. Okay, this up, Sergeant. You know what you have to do? Yes, sir. Your reactionary system of bestowing titles has one advantage, Sir Geoffrey. At least one knows to whom one is talking. Not a bad rule of thumb, Your Excellency. I regret that it is no longer an infallible guide. Now tell me how I can be of service to you. Your minions have told you the rather strange circumstances of the case? Yes, I know the details. Good. As this man was so careless as to be murdered on my doorstep, I must make quite sure that no adverse publicity is reflected on the embassy. Oh, quite. It is our desire to preserve the international decencies, ma'am, and to assist your own inquiries. My inquiries? I thought your men had told you what had happened. Oh, so they have. Then you must be aware that the man died as he fell into the embassy. As he fell? Certainly. Therefore, he must have been stabbed on British soil. 
Yes, I take the point, ma'am. Would we have any proud of the fact that our capital crime statistics are the lowest in the world? And naturally, I am not anxious to enlarge them. There were no witnesses to this murder, were there? No. N nor do we have any idea of exactly where the man was when he was stabbed. No, no, I suppose not. We are, however, quite certain of where the body was at the moment of death. Uh, regrettably, yes. Your diligent peasants put chalk marks all over my doorstep. Well, this uh, kind of police routine, ma'am, often pays dividends, and in this case, I think it can lead us to a solution. How? If we measure the distance from the head to the doorway, we shall know which country has the larger portion uh, of the uh, case, and therefore which of us must deal with it. What a splendid idea. It appeals to my competitive spirit. Roberto, bring a tape measure. What is it, Your Excellency? Measure the body. I beg your pardon? Measure the chalk marks, idiot. First from the head to the feet, then from the doorstep to the feet. Five feet, five inches? You are using an English ruler. Oh, yes, Your Excellency. It belongs to one of the carpenters. But I cannot think in feet. That will not be necessary, Your Excellency. It's the judgment of Solomon. And which of us will be left holding the baby? I figuratively speaking, of course. Now measure from the inside of the doorstep to the feet. Is that quite fair, Your Excellency? But of course. Macedonian soil starts on the inside of the door. On the other hand, I'm sure you assumed that that doorstep was in Macedonia when you were ordering my police for the bouts. You are a very hard man, Sir Geoffrey. Oh. Very well. Measure from the middle of the doorstep to the feet. Two feet, eight and a half inches. There, I told you. It's your case, Sir Geoffrey. I'm afraid not, Your Excellency. In England, we call this uh, a photo finish. Two feet, eight and a half inches is exactly half the length of the body. It isn't, is it? In that case, you're going back to the collector farm at the earliest opportunity. I will not be beaten. Roberto, shut the door and go back to the carpenters. The feet. They were on British soil, were they not? Uh, yes. Now, there wouldn't be a case if the wretched man hadn't walked here, would there? Uh, no. The feet are the locomotive part of the body, and therefore responsible for the rest. I repeat, it's your case, Sir Geoffrey. Well, there are certain flaws in that argument, Your Excellency, which it would be discourteous to expose. In the circumstances, my government will accept responsibility. I knew you would see it my way. For the moment. In the interim, I think I know of a way to find the solution. Splendid. Now, don't forget, Sir Geoffrey, I don't want any adverse publicity. Well, I can assure you, the case will be handled with extreme discretion. Uh, good day, Your Excellency. Come along, Dimmock, resign. We're out of office hours. We're playing in what you might call our own time and a half. The cost of the government will be enormous if you delay your inevitable defeat any longer. I believe in hanging on, bulldog fashion, until the opposition makes a mistake. How traditional of you. <coughs> Hurry up, the assistant commissioner is airborne. I'm sorry to disturb you, gentlemen, but this is a serious matter. I take it you've received my report? What report? He means that packet marked urgent and confidential. Yes, Sir Geoffrey, I received it. I sent it to the relevant department. You, what relevant department? Scotland Yard. No, I sent it to you from Scotland Yard. It's a Cornwall Garden murder. It's not our function to meddle in such things. If you read the covering yeah, letter... Pull up a chair, old man. Take the weight off your feet. The Embassy have asked us to handle the investigation with due regard to the diplomatic implications. I'm trying to concentrate. Yeah, Norton, Dimmock is in a tight spot. If you could lower your voice, it would give him a sporting opportunity. You read the report? Dimmock said it was routine police work. So it is. An unidentified man carrying a large sum of money dies of stab wounds outside the Macedonian Embassy. Routine. No, he, he died as he fell into the Embassy. 
As he fell in? Completely in. Halfway in. Gracious me. Did you hear that, Dimmock? As he died, this unfortunate fellow fell halfway into the Macedonian embassy. Well, does that matter, Oldenshaw? I should like to guarantee that this is the first time that a man has died half in Britain and half in Macedonia. I still see no reason to get involved. It appeals to me, Demarco. Well, I'm glad you see it that way, Oldenshaw. I've brought you an addition to the report. Yeah. The Macedonians insist that it's our case. I think that it's theirs. They say that although the man's heart was evidently in Macedonia, his feet were on British territory. Dimmock, the knife was Spanish, the blade was ground in Bayon, and the money in the dead man's pocket was Italian lira. How can you resist the international flavour of such a case? Very easily. This, I take it, is a photograph of the dead man? Uh, yes, it shows his position uh, midway between the two countries, so to speak. It also shows his clothes, a poor quality and an outrageous cut. He's hardly looking his best. Off the peg south of Naples, I should say. What do you think, Demac? I think it is a police case, and I think they should get on with it. You are very hard at times, Demac. The police is overworked and understaffed. So are the railways. Do you suggest we go to King's Cross and drive a train? I should like to circularize, Norton. Make sure the newspapers get it. I want it published. But I, I promised the embassy there'd be no publicity. Either we handle this case, Norton, or we don't. We? You mean you? Stop struggling, Dimmock. Your position is hopeless. Very well, Norton. Leave it with us. We'll mull it over a little. Uh, yes. You will um, give me a phone call, will you? Uh, we've paid your bill. Yeah. That was rather a good move, Dimmock. Hey, hey, stop. Stop. OK. Number five to section B, number nine to section D. Take those plates to the end of the corridor. Keep track of everything, Roberto. Oh, Your Excellency, I'm... One lost canvas and I'll have you in a salt mine. Hang it properly, you progressive farm numbskull. On the right way up. This isn't progressive art. Over to the left. To the right. Haven't you got those partitions fixed yet? Roberto? There's a bell ringing, Roberto. Can't you hear it? I've told you before, never keep the British waiting or they will immediately form a queue. Well, go and answer it. Oh, Your Excellency, I'm very busy. Couldn't the servants... Servants? All the servants have ever sent us a security agent in disguise trying to spy on the West. They wouldn't open the door to a Swiss banker. Well, hurry, Roberto. Where are you putting those crates, you Stalinists? All crates will be left in the storeroom. <gasps> Don't hang them up like that, you Philistine. What do you think they are? Toby Jugs. But, madam, but why do you come here? This is the Macedonian Embassy, isn't it? But why should you think we have any connection with such a distasteful incident? It was in the papers. His picture and this very attractive place you people have here. In the papers? Excellency, look! After all their promises. You can't trust a British official nowadays. Not at all like the old days. Get on to Sir Geoffrey Norton at once, Roberto. Stay here, my dear. We'll sort this thing out immediately. This is what really intrigues me. It was found in the dead man's pocket. I'm astonished by the things that intrigue you, Oldenshaw. Yes? Norton here. I've just had the embassy on the phone. They've given me hell. Did you accept it? They're very annoyed about the publicity. And furthermore, they have a strange woman there who is somehow implicated. I suggest you go around there, Sir Geoffrey, smooth the ruffle feathers, and as far as the strange lady is concerned, implicate her further. Good day. Do you know what it is? You're putting me on my mettle. I hope that is not a pun, Dimmock. I don't forgive easily. It's part of the driving unit of a mechanical drill. Is it indeed? Has it been used recently? Very recently. Hmm. In that case, I'd say the deceased was an Italian engineer who'd been in England for a couple of days. What gave you the time factor? Uh, this was in his pocket. Fingerprints. Oh, they're done already. Yes, no, slow, fast, left, right, stop, go. 
uh, the words of a foreigner who'd been in England for a couple of days and had to receive instructions. Yes, for a learner driver. But the point is, who would pay a semi-skilled worker money like that for two days' work? A good thought, Dimmock. Good for a man who's not really trying. I very much forget to say that Her Excellency is expecting... Sir Jeffrey, uh, you've let us down. You uh, promised no publicity. What happened to the gentleman's agreement? I'm, I'm very sorry, but uh, I... Uh, there was nothing I could do about it. It's some cunning manoeuvre on the part of your government. Oh, oh, certainly not. I wish I'd sent the whole case to The Hague. So, if you wish, you can reconsider who you want to handle the investigation. Too late. This young lady already wishes to see you. I do? But of course. This is Sir Geoffrey Norton from Scotland Yard. How disappointing. You see, I'd hoped I'd be a key witness in Omsk or Tomsk or some place like that. Uh, you have something to say to us, Miss... Uh, Martha uh, Ross. And it's just that I recognize the poor man. Such a charmer. Simpatico. It was the eyes. He let me know exactly what he was thinking. So encouraging in this day and age, isn't it? Uh, yes, I, I suppose it uh, would be. Uh, now, now, tell me, uh, when did you meet him? I have a place in Chelsea. Well, Fulham, actually. It's too large by far. So you let the odd room. <laughs> For the company, I imagine, rather than anything. <clears throat> well, how long did he stay? Darling, booked for a week, but he'd gone by the third day. Never even came back to collect his things. Oh, well, uh, that's very embarrassing. I do hope that he paid in advance. The rent was paid, darling, but not by him. Some friends of his drove him over, paid the rent and collected him every morning. You see, he couldn't speak English. It's quite a handicap, really. Uh, you uh, can't identify or describe these people or tell me the number of their car. My dear Inspector. It is Inspector, isn't it? Assistant Commissioner. Mm. How wonderfully elevated. Uh, and uh, <clears throat> you can't tell me the car number. How could I? I was interested in him, not the wretched car. It was the eyes. He gave me such a long look when he left me each morning, and a longer look when he came back at night. What a tragedy. He didn't last the week. And uh, you say that his uh, baggage is uh, still in, in your house? Yes, except for this. It was on top of his case. Oh, uh, thank you, Miss... Uh... Martha Roth. My pleasure. Who was he, Sir Geoffrey? Uh, Luigi Dari. Not Macedonian, I hope. Oh, no, Italian. Oh, thank goodness. We're such a small country. We cannot afford to lose our inhabitants in such a careless fashion. Mine, I think. Oh, I don't know how you do it. Unlike me, Mr. Blake, you must be lucky when it comes to love. Where the hell have you been? Seeing Loda. Why? I told him we were ready to go. Well, that's right, we are. Well, we can't. Not till he gives the word. He thinks I'm going to sit around in this oily, greasy garage until he's... He's attending a committee meeting now where we shall find out all we want to know. Karen, my dear, when a million dollars are at stake, what are two or three days? It's two or three days playing cards with this slow-witted idiot. What happened to Dari? He's on the plane. Are you sure? Hmm. I followed him to the airport, saw him aboard. Now, just relax, my dear. A few more hours, and we shall be all set for the most splendid double cross. Passport of one Luigi Dari, air flight ticket, night flight to Naples, roughly this time he was leaning on the embassy bell. Sudden train to France. Sudden indeed. No time to cancel the flight. What do you think of that? What do the police say? I want to know what you think. Oh dear, parlour games. Clay. Very good. London clay. They call it Paris clay in France, Old and Shaw. It is one of the worst foundations on which to build a city. Which is why, I suppose, we and the French chose to construct our capitals on it. You realise, of course, the significance of it. 
But of course, the late Signor Dari spent part of his last few days drilling a hole under the city of London. And as that's rather a large area, it doesn't take us very far. I do wish we'd stop pushing these revolting substances in front of the old and What is it? Scraping of fine brick dust. Very good. So? At a guess, I should say our late Italian mining friend drilled a hole through the city of London into the foundations of some buildings. Ten out of ten. Why go to the trouble of getting an Italian over here? That's not so remarkable. Look at this uh, sound historical precedence for our friend's visit. Ah, oh, Tudor aristocracy were building their country mansions. They were forever importing needy Italian craftsmen into England. The Italians were masters in constructing secret passages. Houses would be honeycombed with them for a quick getaway. Turn the third gargoyle on the left, you mean? Precisely. And when the job was done, the workmen would be shipped off home back to sunny Siena. The secret passages stayed secret. No local labour to blow the gaff over a tankard of English ale. A colourful piece of history, old and short. You mean somebody paid Dari to do a job they wanted to keep quiet about? Yes, and he must have done it because they paid him and booked his passage home. Why didn't he go? Geography plays an important part in this, Dimmock. Remember where the man died? Outside the Macedonian embassy. Precisely. And you know what's going on inside the embassy. Should I? You proletarians! You're not working on a five-year plan. This exhibition opens on Monday. Mr. Loder, you'd think a simple job like putting up a few pictures could be done without a fuss. But I'm surrounded by saboteurs from outer Mongolia. Your Excellency, you know my daughter. We have a file on her. How are you, Mr. Loder? We owe you a great debt for the way in which you've worked to make this coming exhibition a success. But as I feel now, I wish you'd never suggested the damn project in the first place. Ah, I'm so sorry, Your Excellency. Oh, pay no attention to me, my dear man. A peasant will always complain in case you ask him to pay more taxes. <laughs> I'm loving every moment of it. It is Roberta here who suffers, poor fellow. He comes from a small village without art exhibitions and no dead men. But there's a million pounds worth of paint and canvas in this building. Lock it up, Roberto. Come along, Mr. Loder. The committee waits on instructions. We won't be long, Celia. Perhaps you may have a look round. Look anywhere? Look everywhere, my dear. Roberto? Roberto? Yes, Your Excellency. Look after our guest, Roberto. Tell her all the exciting things that happened in this small and insignificant embassy. Oh, uh, tell her about that poor Italian. Poor Italian, Your Excellency. Oh, of course you wouldn't know, Mr. Loder. So sad at this time of festivity. It quite depresses my natural gaiety. You know, Mr. Loder, there's one thing I can never forget or forgive. What is that, Your Excellency? Murder, Mr. Loder. Look at that. Yes, I am looking. Not one of the best examples of our paintings, I'm afraid. <clears throat> that is a picture of my great-great-aunt Geraldine, one of my stolen ancestors. Oh, really? Oh, she is very like you. Uh, very beautiful. And that is my great-great-grandfather. Yes, well, one can't have everything. They used to belong to my family, you know. Incidentally, where will they be hung? I will show you. We are hanging everything day by day, century by century. We haven't got enough space to hang them all at once. Your paintings, which were painted in the 19th century, uh, we won't reach until uh, y y tomorrow evening. Yes, but where will they be? And I will show you. At the moment, it's the 18th century collection. <clears throat> and the Lord Rafi portraits will be replacing numbers 405 and 407, which are... Uh, ah, there and there. Won't they look wonderful? Everything will look wonderful. Soon, the whole world will know that Macedonia is as rich in her arts as she is in every other way. Well, my dear, what do you think of our exhibition? <laughs> it's going to be an enormous success. Paris, Rome, New York, the whole world will soon ask for it. And it was your father's idea. No, no. Of course it was. Do not be modest, Mr. Loder. Is uh, everything going to be in this one room, Your Excellency? Everything. We are pressed for space in this embassy. We're a poor country. But by using such partitions, we shall be able to hang everything. Anything wrong, Mr. Loder? Well, you're not going to put that thing there. Well, why not? Um, uh, well, uh, surely some tapestry would balance the look of the room better. Diana hunting and all that ridiculous nonsense, you mean? Yes. Yes, maybe you're right. 
If the gentleman went back over there and I brought the tapestries over from that wall, then I think... What's that? It's the catalogue of their art exhibition. They gave it to Norton. I believe they want him to attend the opening. Observe numbers 405 and 407. Captain Stefan Lodorotti in the uniform of the Macedonian Hussars and Countess Geraldine Lodorotti with diamond earrings, gold pendant and other family heirlooms. Right, sir. Where's that damned file? Oh, you haven't left another government document in the taxi, have you? Those pictures are family heirlooms, which are now the property of that small people's republic. They were confiscated at the end of the last war because the Lodorotti family removed itself from uh, proletarian Macedonia to bourgeois Britain changed its name to Loder. The present Loder was at school in this country. Ah. ah, yes, of course. I remember now. And later, he wrote continually to the press, protesting at his scurvy treatment he'd received as an Englishman with property abroad. Oh, all right. Yes, when he took out British papers, his confiscated uh, property remained in Macedonia. Well, he's always been very open and above board and his claims against the land of his birth. Oh, nothing subtle about the Lodorotti family. He scorned the peasants who took over his estates and he let them know it. Oh, do have your key at the ready, Oh, damn. I think I've left it in the old suit. Oh, my God. I see we're going to have to finish this case out here. I swore I put them in a safe place. Mm. Oh, well, this is what I was looking for. From the Times, written a couple of years ago. I consider myself morally entitled and indeed obliged to claim the property stolen from my family by the Macedonian government. I am shocked at the little support that I find in this country, yours, etc., etc. Et the words of a determined man, some of whose property is now in this country. In the Macedonian embassy, in fact. Have you tried your turn ups? Oh, don't be so old fashioned, old and sure. Well, he gave them fair warning. He'd intended to repossess himself of his beloved pictures by hook or by crook. And if he had to murder somebody. Let us not forget, Dimmock, that is the question we must ask ourselves, for it is a murder we have been asked to investigate. Now, well, how did it get in there? Uh. Go to jail? Open the door and let him in. Something has gone wrong. Another thing. Uh, everything's going like clockwork. I've got the times and the positions. Now, the pictures are part of the 19th century collection. That means they won't be on the other side of the wall until tomorrow evening. Tomorrow? That's a long time. Be patient. We can offer you a drink, Mr. Loder, if you don't mind a rather disgusting plastic mug. You're very kind, but no thanks. Have you been in there? Yes. I've just been on the other side of that wall. It's pretty solid. Oh, that won't trouble us. Blake here is an expert in removing bricks. He can make a hole in anything. That's why we put up with him. The ambassador's looking after everything herself. Now, each evening at 7 o'clock, the gallery will be cleared and a new lot of pictures hung. Then the gallery will be locked. They're very careful with their treasured pictures. Small-minded little nation. There's a guard in the hall outside, but of course there's no one in the gallery at night. Now look. Here's a plan. There's the gallery. There's the hall. And here is a room used to keep the pictures in. The two we want are still there, hence the delay. So I'm afraid there's nothing for it but to wait until they're hung. That should be about 10 o'clock tomorrow night. But they've been putting that first lot of pictures up for two days now. What takes them so long, eh? Well, they've had other things to occupy them in that embassy, you know. I don't suppose that dead man helped much. Dead man? Yes, they had a dead Italian on their doorstep yesterday. Oh, what happened? It's of what? no importance. Why do we waste time? Good night, Mr. Loder. We know that you have much to do. Oh, well, I suppose you're right, really. Yes, I... Uh... Bye. Goodbye. What happened? What did you do it for? I had no alternative. He was going in. I don't understand what you're talking about. It seems he killed the little Italian. He done what? You told us you went to see him off at the airport. What did you do that for, eh? He was on the way to the embassy to warn them that they were going to be burgled. If you hadn't pushed him around and made him suspicious, he'd have gone off home. He saw that plan. I told you he'd seen it. He must know everything. 
Anybody could see that that embassy backs onto this garage? Quite. That's the trouble with employing respectable people. But what did you kill him for? Couldn't you have bribed him to keep his mouth shut? There was no time. He was ringing the bell. Now, I don't know why I work with such stupid people. You kill a man in this country, they look for you. Well, they can find nothing. There's no connection. An Italian whom nobody knows. Besides, we shall be out of the country by this time tomorrow. The police may have caught up with us by then. Car radio. We'll begin now. They'll still be in the gallery. Start. It'll be hours before Mr. Blake is anywhere near the other side. All right, Blake. You ought to lend Blake a hand. We want to be in and out again before dear Mr. Loder begins to understand. Charming. According to Sir Geoffrey's timetable, the Loderati pictures will not be in place until late tomorrow night. Ah, now therefore, he must be through that wall by then. Oh, I think even Sir Geoffrey can safely be left to handle the rest of this case. Get in touch with him. Uh, one moment, Director. It was never part of our brief to stop anybody stealing pictures, remember, uh, particularly their own. We were asked to investigate a murder. In order to solve that, it may be necessary to overlook the theft of the pictures. But we solved the murder. We know who the murderer is. At least the man responsible. Loder? Yes. As soon as Dari had finished the tunnelling, Loder murdered him to keep his mouth shut. I wonder. I don't see Loder doing that. It's, it's old characters against it. Well, what do you know of his character? Very little, but I've taken some steps to find out more. Ah. I don't believe a man's character changes radically in a lifetime. What have you got there? His school reports. Loder's? No. Who's then? Loderotti was his name during the happiest days of his life. Out. How much longer? A couple of hours yet. We've got to take it easy. They're still in there. Off you go home now, the lot of you. And don't forget, first thing in the morning, sign in with Roberto. Roberto? <coughs> Shall I lock it, Your Excellency? This is one job I must do myself. Come along, Roberto. Bosch for supper. Then Fort Knox. That's it. Dig. Latin? Dreadful. English? Appalling. Sciences? He was near the bottom of his class year after year. You will find his teacher's comments hardly valid. A poor scholar tries but in vain, shows little aptitude, not very bright. Now read the housemaster's comment. Uh, ah, courageous and loyal, a good sportsman, unimaginative but very fair, good in the scrum, has never been known to hit below the belt. Not the reports of a man who would stab a fellow being in the back, I suggest. No. And our problem is, who else could stand to gain by putting Dari out of the way? Yes, we need to pass a little information on, Demac. Quite. And we know just the man to do it. Sir Geoffrey, 
May I introduce my daughter, Celia? Oh, uh, how do you know? How do you do? Do sit down. Oh, oh that's so kind of you. I'm sorry to intrude, really. It's just a matter of routine, very tedious, but then we policemen... <laughs> there you are. How can we help? Well, this dead Italian, Luigi Dari, no one on the embassy staff seems to know him, so there appears to be no reason for his call. Uh, unless he knew that your committee would be meeting there. The exhibition subcommittee? Oh, it's been suggested that he knew someone on it. Oh, oh thank you. I can't help. <laughs> it wasn't me. <laughs> well, we have to ask these questions, you know. I think we're much likely more likely to get on the track of the fellow through his job. What was his job, Sir Geoffrey? Some sort of miner, I believe. A miner? Yeah, you know the type of thing. Tunneling. They, they work underground. Oh, surprisingly clean sort of people. Bar for a lot, of course. That Italian? Yeah. Dari? Hmm. Why? Don't tell me you know the chap. Oh, I'm sorry, Sir Geoffrey. We can't help. Yes, well, I mean, you wouldn't put your working underground. It's hardly likely. Uh, you, well, well, if you excuse me, uh, thank you for your kindness. I must be running along. Now, don't bother to see me to the door. Uh, always thought it was a long shot anyway. Uh, good night, Jill. Digging a tunnel? Oh, it can't be. We used a man called Davis, a Welshman. I told Hartie about him. He said they, they said he'd done a good job. Oh, it must be a coincidence, Father. They used me to get into that embassy for their own purposes. Well, what reason could they possibly have? Well, that's exactly what I intend to find oh, out. Oh, don't be foolish, Father. If they double-crossed you, they'll kill you. Well, I'm not going to let them get away with it. But they've already killed one man. I only wanted my pictures. You know that. I won't have murder on my conscience. Hurry up, Blake. Oh, give us a hand, then, ain't ye? It's about time you did something. Well? Hattie. Push. According to Norton, they were both very taken aback. He is of the opinion that they had no idea that Dari was burrowing beneath the soil. Curious. Well, Lady will know all about it now. Hmm. If he is the man we take him to be, the father of the child, so to speak, he will take certain definite steps. Very dangerous steps. Why didn't you tell Norton everything we know? Because we know nothing. We merely assume. It is all a wild surmise. Again? Besides, basically, Loder is not a dishonest man. We must give him a chance to redeem himself. Impetuous, courageous. Exactly. A predictable type. All right. What will he do, then? Do? He will go down with all guns firing. What are we going to do? We'll open the door. We can't keep the load waiting. Ooh. He's come in. How nice to see you, Mr. Loder. Didn't expect you, Mr. Loder. Obviously not. Obviously. Otherwise, I don't suppose you'd have started on the wall the day before I told you to. We like to have everything ready. Who cut through? Davis? No, we did it ourselves. A plate did it? Yeah, I done it. What did Davis do? Just the tunnel. Now, why do you ask? Why didn't you employ him, Hattie? So you know. I know. It's uh, quite usual, Mr. Loder. We don't like to use people from the district. as They might talk. You had an Italian called Dari working on that tunnel. You killed him. You can prove that? I think it can be proved. Bad luck for you, Mr. Loder. You're involved, you know. Not with murder. Dear Mr. Loder, wouldn't you like to forget this for a few hours? Don't you want your property back, your own valuable property? Not that badly. Then why did you come here? To make sure of the facts before I inform the police. Don't be silly, Mr. Loder. Oh! oh. Thank you for the warning, Mr. Loder. We must act quickly. Knocking a gun out of a lady's hand. Charming. What do we do now? We work even faster, Blake, that's all. Can you get through? Yes. Right. 
Now, we want the icons. Numbers 4, 7, 11 in section 1, then all of sections 2, 3 and 4. Don't touch the others, they're worthless or too difficult to dispose of. Is that understood? Yeah. Good. Yes, well, help him. Take her out. Charming. Now then, miss, where's your father? My father? Went home, I think. Mr. Velda, how nice of you to call. What a brave man. Sir Geoffrey, you see how my fellow countrymen rose to the occasion, foiling the thieves single-handed? You must have a suitable reward. I know the very thing. I would like to present you with a load of rotty portraits. Well, it's the least I can do. In the circumstances. Yeah, perhaps I can collect them at a later date, Your Excellency. Shall we go, Sir Geoffrey? Yes? Yes? Good. Thanks. Apparently, Atier's accomplices have turned Queen's evidence. He is the murderer. Splendid. But uh, whose responsibility is it? Ours, apparently. His feet were on British soil at the time of the murder. If he'd had a foot, or even a nose, inside the embassy doorway, he might have been able to claim some sort of diplomatic immunity. Norton uh, arrested Lodav, is him? Well, he tried to. The embassy do not intend to press charges. I mean, he's getting away with it altogether. <laughs> no, not exactly. They gave him his pictures back. Imagine living with those monstrosities all your life. Poetic justice, Dimmer. No doubt he'll return them with a flourish of patriotism. There'll be a reconciliation with the land of his birth. He'll probably go back as Minister of Culture. Oh, damn cunning, these Europeans. Mm. 